Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for joining us over your lunch break. Uh, we're excited to be here, excited to be joined by Bobby. Um, and I must say, before we kick off, props to the Slush team member that came up with the title for this, uh, for this particular talk. Um, I think before we start, we're going to show a really brief video to kind of introduce what we're, what we're really talking about today. When I watch a video like that, I feel like I'm really, truly glimpsing uh, into the future. Um, Bobby, man is not your first business, so maybe just talk us through how you came to this, how you came to this business, how you came to drone delivery. Yeah, I'm a programmer, that's my trade, and I was curious about tech. I've, this is the fourth business that I founded, and this business came from a very simple idea. I mean, I live in a suburb of Dublin, there's 25,000 people in the suburb, and there's no profitable delivery available from takeaway restaurants, from anywhere. And I'm sitting outside the local chip shop, you know, being Irish on a Friday night. And there's two guys sitting in cars, diesel powered cars, with the engines running, waiting for an order to come in to drive out to deliver the order. So pretty clear that the economics of delivery outside of very dense urban centers is broken, doesn't work, it needs a solution. Uh, the restaurants need a solution, the vendors need a solution, and producing CO2 in cars with human beings is not the solution. And then you combine that with a confluence of various different technologies around battery, around GPU, around machine vision, LiDAR, and all of these things now being available almost in a commoditized form, you have the toolkit to, to actually build a solution. It, it's one thing to think about, you've got all these delivery guys, we've all seen them kind of piled up outside restaurants. It's another thing to think, okay, I'm going to build a drone company and fly these hamburgers from, from <laughs> A to B. Um, so just, it's a, it's a huge vision and that's sort of a very long-term vision. How, how does it work today? Yeah, so you open our app, you discover all the local vendors that are there, the, the, the local supermarket, the pharmacy, uh, the, the food, the coffee vendor, whatever it is. You transact like a normal basket, a normal shopping experience. Mm -hmm. And the, the only difference is at the end of it, your address, we confirm your address and we ask you to drop a pin on a map to where you would like the product delivered. And that's it, like the, the user experience is just a normal e-commerce experience, but it just, it gets a bit more exciting than normal after that because three minutes later, the product lands in your front lawn or your back lawn. Um, so it's, yeah, it's pretty wild. And la I mean, talk us through yeah. how it lands. I mean, so you'll we'll, we'll have seen in the video there, we, we fly at about between 50 and 80 meters at about 80 kilometers per hour. Um, so our maximum delivery time is three minutes from the store to the house. When we arrive at your house, we descend to about 15 meters and we'll hover there. We'll look for a safe, flat place, inanimate, to deliver onto. And we hover 15 meters, we open the cargo bay doors and we winch the product down to the ground on a biodegradable linen thread. Um, so it's very green. Uh, it's it's uh, extremely safe and uh, we can deliver, as we have done, coffees, beers, fresh eggs. Lots of people test us by ordering fresh eggs, thinking that they're going to get an omelette. Yeah. Uh, we've never cracked an egg in 85,000 flights. I mean, 85,000 flights. We'll, we'll come on in a minute and talk about where you are with this because... You know, it, like I said, when you when you watch the video, it feels like we're looking into a sort of a, a pretty futuristic world. But this is this is sort of very, this yeah. is sort of very real. And and in a way, it's sort of I've had the pleasure of going and seeing it and <laughs> lattes and cappuccinos, fresh lattes and cappuccinos being delivered per perfectly onto somebody's yeah. garden. It's um, you, know, you know, it really does need to be seen. People to be don't seen. believe it. Yeah. yeah. Even though we've got eighty-five thousand flights under the belt, um, drone delivery is going to replace 100% of road-based delivery for suburban communities. 
And when you see, you have to see it in real life to understand why that is. The, the aircraft are silent. You can't hear them when they're cruise altitude. Um, they're so much more efficient. We, we carry a pretty big basket of products. Like we've served meals for families of five people. We can carry eight coffees and pastries. Uh, and the aircraft is a set of parameters that if we wanted to, we could expand into grocery, no problem. We would just increase the, the amount of energy we put into the aircraft. So, so you have the basic toolkit of a massive disruption to last mile that we're on the cusp of scaling across Europe. I mean, but that... That's a huge statement, right? Drone delivery is going to replace 100% of road-based yeah. delivery in suburban areas. Now, you know, we all know, we've just, we've just heard from the guys at Getir, I mean, we all know on-demand delivery has exploded over this last decade. I mean, what, what role will drones play long-term? How does drones fit into the ecosystem? We've got riders, you've talked a little bit about suburban communities, and, and we'll come on to talk about what MANA is doing today. But, but paint me a picture of what role drones will play in delivery and, and you know, how long is it going to take us to get there? Yeah, so we, if I give you some examples of, of who, you know, the, the end, the, the community is our customer. Mm -hmm. So we roll out the infrastructure, it's the community's infrastructure, it's a replacement of their roads. It allows everyone in the community to move things around efficiently. Mm -hmm. So if you think about the, the local bookstore in, in Oranmore, one of our first towns we operated in, it's like 10,000 people in Oranmore and it's well spread out. That bookstore now has a better product than Amazon has mm. for those customers. Like that bookstore can get all of their books sold online and delivered in less than five minutes. So that's a pretty powerful tool to give a community. And, and so our role is, first of all, embrace and work with the local community, get all of the local vendors on board, get the big brands on board as well. Mm -hmm. So we work with Coca-Cola, we work with uh, Just Eat, with Ben and Jerry's, a number of big brands. And, and we're, just, we're, lear we're still in learn mode. Like how, do, how do communities use this? So in the first time we operated in, every single restaurant and coffee shop and local store works with us, every single one of them. They still work with us. Mm -hmm. and 38% of the people have ordered from us in the town of 10,000 people. That is a phenomenal penetration rate that no road-based delivery system has ever achieved, yeah. right? And the reason that is is that we now make certain perishable products viable that weren't viable before for delivery. So in what world did anyone ever order a coffee and have it delivered? There was never that world. Mm -hmm. We now have people in less, well, just over a year of operation in this town with over 100 deliveries to their homes. And there's a cohort of people that are just, that is their behavior now. It is no longer drone delivery, it is just delivery. They don't even come out of their house to film the drone anymore. So we've, we've already reached this behavioral norm where it's just okay and absolutely normal to use it, so. So, so you talked about, you mentioned Oran Moore, the, the town in which you're live. Uh, so, Mana is being built out of Ireland. Um, maybe just talk us through the first towns. You, you launched first in Oranmore. You've just launched your second town yeah. in, in Dublin. Uh, so this is, this is very real, very live. But just talk us through how you operate in those towns, yeah. what you're learning. Yeah, so we, we've just opened up a town called Balbriggan, which mm -hmm. is in Dublin. And we intentionally did that because it's actually the second most population dense area of Ireland, right? So there's 7,000 people per square mile. We have to deliver on something the size of that table to get to them, right? So we've given ourselves a really difficult challenge and we've already, we're already doing, you know, three times more deliveries than we did in the last town. And, uh, you know, by January, we'll be doing about four or 500 deliveries a day, which is the world's largest drone delivery program program. But we chose that town because there's 35,000 people, there's 10,000 homes, and there's no road-based delivery, at least no profitable road-based delivery. And so we're working with all the local partners there, and we fly off the roof of the supermarket. Mm -hmm. And we have a dark kitchen up there where we make food, we make coffee, we make pastries. We have all these stored products there, so the books, the hardware store, all of those things from a central place that local vendors stock for us. So the local vendors, at the moment, how, how you operate, local vendors are coming to you, you've got a sort of a dark yeah. kitchen set up, your own coffees, and you are flying the drones from the roof of a Tesco. Yeah. And right now we have just, just four, one aircraft will do about eight deliveries per hour. So right now we have four, only four aircraft serving mm -hmm. 35,000 people. We probably scale that to between eight and 10 aircraft. 
and that probably is all that town will need because they're pretty efficient. Yeah. We'll come on and, and talk about the sort of scaling journey in a minute because that's I think that's sort of one of the key things here. We're talking about four to five hundred flights a day, eighty flights a day now, close to four to five hundred flights a day. And then, you know, how do we think about getting to 10 million flights a day? I mean, that's obviously the ambition here. But before we go there, I mean, you know, we're talking about dropping coffee. It all sort of sounds very simple as you and I sit here and talk about it, dropping coffees into people's gardens. Um, but this is a, a hugely complex business. You're building hardware, you're building complex software, and then you're dealing with a, a regulatory environment. Um, mm -hmm. and, and drones are regulated by the same, in the same regulatory environment as an, air, as an airline. You're effectively building yeah. a new airline. Um, maybe just talk us through how you tackle that complexity. Um, yeah. And maybe, you know, without going, we don't want to sort of send people into a post-lunch coma going too deep on, on regulation. But yeah. of course, it's the key question here, right? <laughs> what, how, how is this regulated? What licenses do you have today? How is this going to evolve? Yeah, so uh, when, I, when I started the business, the, the, the picture emerged very quickly that this is a really hard thing to do. Uh, because of the, not, not really because of the regulation. The regulation are, is a kind of a, an, almost an endorsement of what you're doing or, or an audit of what you're doing. In the end, we're going to be flying 10 million flights a day. It better be perfect. It has to be perfect because there's no... There isn't a, we'll roll out a, a, a fix for that bug later on. So, so the way you have to think about this is it's about reliability engineering, first and foremost. It's about what happens when everything that can fail fails because the law of large numbers says that, right? So you heard the, the Lilium guy earlier on talking about a battery fire. What happens, how do you manage a battery fire when you're over somebody's house? What, what do you do? So all those, it's, it's not the core. The core product, any engineering team can build a drone and they can also build a, a software stack. Uh, all of these components to what we do are not you know, nuclear fusion. They, they are relatively straightforward engineering concepts. Mm -hmm. But it's the scaling in terms of throughput and volume that breaks all standard theories. And so you have to, <laughs> you just have to design for every worst assumption and then add a buffer to that. So uh, one small example, we, have, we fly out with, we have a 1.4 kilowatt battery, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the worst case flight we have in a normal situation is about 400 watt hours. So we already have three and a half times the energy we need. We have to assume if we're flying in a maximum you know, airspeed of 25 meters per second, so about 75 kilometers per hour, mm -hmm. we have to assume that the wind more than doubles in strength and changes direction by 180 degrees and we didn't deliver the cargo and we have to carry it home. That's our equation. Mm -hmm. So it's those, and th those levels of extra buffer that make it really, really hard. And then talking to a regulator about this concept of, you know, it's like you have two heads. You say, I'm just going to fly a 25 kilo, uh, kilogram aircraft over populated areas without their permission mm -hmm. to deliver hamburgers and coffee. It's not a pretty conversation at the start of it. I'm sure. Um, so you need to have aviation credentials and we're regulated as an airline, as an aircraft manufacturer yeah. and an operator. And we have a European wide license to do that. Yeah. And it is really the most difficult part of the business. You, you've said to me before, you know, you're, you're building an airline and an aircraft and an airport all at the same time. Oh yeah, and um, also a software company and, and, a, and an e-commerce company. And an e-commerce company yeah. and a software company. So, I mean, you know, we, we, um, the, uh, the complexity of, of what you're doing, and I, and I know you've, you've, is, is, is kind of mind boggling to a certain extent. And I know you guys have done a lot of testing and safety testing. It's one of the things I hear you talk an awful lot about is, yep. is sort of the safety testing because this is an environment in which, as you said, the stakes are high. If something goes wrong, the regulatory environment and, and appetite here could sort of change, could change on a whim. Yep. Um, you mentioned you're the, the first and, and only um, drone company to have a European-wide license, operating yep. license, um, which is incredibly exciting. Um, you're based out of Ireland. Maybe just why Ireland? It may not be sort of obvious to people yeah. uh, as to why that might provide an advantage. Why will an Irish startup, we're 
Some people say it's because I'm Irish, I'm in Ireland. Uh, <laughs> Naturally. But, it, but it's not. I mean, the last businesses I created was Mexico City and the United States, and that's where you go where the action is. Yeah. And in drones, the action is in Europe, number one. Within Europe, Ireland is a leader on the drone regulatory space. So the Irish Aviation Authority has decided that it wants to lead the way and define the regulations and champion the regulations. So that's one part is that we have a regulator that literally we can have a, a, an iterative conversation, an honest one, mm-hmm. about where the strengths are, where the weaknesses are, and, and they're learning as much as we are at the same time. So it's a partnership. Yeah. And there's no other world. If you start this business in the United States, you could hit the pause button for three years and then catch up with what Ireland is doing. So we have an unfair advantage by being in Ireland through the regulatory space. We don't get a free ride. Mm-hmm. We just get to go at the pace of a startup, which is incredible. And then the other part is, I don't need to rent a wind tunnel because, you know, we, we test in the worst country on the planet to test the drone delivery business. It pisses rain every day. You get every season pretty much every day. And the wind, like, we, we get to avail of, you know, winds on the west coast of Ireland that are just phenomenally difficult to, to work with. So yeah. the, the 85,000 flights we have on the clock, none of them are in benign weather. They're all in challenging weather. So being able to do that and, and kind of harden the product in those harsh environments means that you're kind of ready to take on the rest of the world straight away. Whereas if you go out with a product that's been tested in California, you know, or, or you know, somewhere with a benign weather yeah, you, condition. You're shocked to the system when you get to the Atlantic yeah, like west the coast problem, of Ireland. The problem we have to solve. We hover over your house at you know, 15 meters, and it takes, we drop the product down on, on the thread. Yeah. And it takes about six seconds for that to happen. And of course, if there's a really strong side wind blowing, mm-hmm. the aircraft is doing this to stay in position, to keep the bag, to land on the table. But of course, the wind doesn't want to play ball with that, so the wind's pushing the bag out. So we use LiDAR underneath the aircraft to track the bag and bank the opposite direction to put it onto the thing. That isn't very easy to and test. Not, and not spill the coffee. And ne- we never spilled the coffee or broken an egg. So, like, <laughs> to do all that stuff, you can try and reproduce those environments if you want, but it's just come to Ireland, it's easier. Yeah. No, no it, I mean, it, it's been phenomenal to see. Um, and what about, what about some of the challenges, the big question marks that come from drones? I'm thinking about things like privacy, um, concerns, whether from the, the regulator, but even more so from the communities in which you're working with, uh, noise. W- what do you hear from them? Uh, you know, people naturally, I think I often hear this when we talk about drone delivery, what does this mean for privacy, drones yeah. flying overhead? They're going to be noisy. Do we want to live in a world where we've got these noisy things over our heads? How, yeah. do you, how do you deal with that? What are your responses? So, I mean, half the audience here, I'd be pretty certain, are thinking drones are noisy. What about my privacy? Like, we, yeah. we've surveyed, yeah. we've done lots of surveys, and the top item that comes out is privacy. Yeah. The second one is noise. The third one is job destruction. And the fourth one is safety. And actually, safety is the only one that people should be concerned about. Yeah. Our, our aircraft makes less noise than an electric car does passing by your house. So the noise is easy to fix if you have large props. That's how you fix the noise of drones. So they spin more slowly, they're more efficient. And you actually can't hear our aircraft if they fly over your house. That's important. Mm-hmm. Um, privacy is also very easy. We have no data. We record absolutely no customer data. We don't know your name. We don't know your email, your phone number, none of that. We don't store any of it. We have no recording equipment on the aircraft except for flight logs. So, so privacy is an easy one to behave around, but, but to communicate that and to make you know, populations or, or communities feel confident in that is a different story. Yeah. And you know, big tech has kind of shot everyone in the foot with, with some of the, the ways they've collected data. And it's, it's on us to communicate properly and clearly with the communities that are giving us permission to fly over them, yeah. that there is no privacy issue, there is no safety issue, there is, and they, they know, like, we have zero complaints, I should say, from the 10,000 people that we've served in, in Galway for the last 14 months, zero complaints. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, 10,000 people is enough to surface a few trolls. And, and we don't expect any genuine complaints around the noise because it, it's solved. Um, and so, so in the end, you're, you're asking communities 
to, yeah, you're giving them a great tool, but, but you have to do it with the communities on board. Mm -hmm. And so we take those issues and those concerns extremely seriously. And uh, so net net, after, you know, after we've, before we go into a town and after we've rolled into a town, there's no complaints. And 98% of people that we've surveyed mm -hmm say that they will want and will pay for drone delivery. So we know generally people want it. It's for us to make sure that we do it properly. And talk us, in terms of the, where you're operating right now, you've touched on some of the things that you're delivering. What are people ordering? Is it a novelty? Because <laughs> this, this was always the thing, right? Like if, if a drone delivery operation shows up in your town, yep. I mean, the first thing I'm going to do is get on and get yeah. this drone to my house and film it and share it yeah. and we've seen it on Twitter and you want to see this in real life, go, go check out the Mana videos on Twitter. Um, does it become real over time? Does this move from novelty to this is how I get yeah. my, my coffee? How, what are you seeing in the community? All, all the first operating? orders are jelly snakes and, cho <laughs> and chocolates. Yeah. So that's the number one thing that comes out at, at first because uh, it's the kids, right? So we yeah. go to all the schools, we bring the drone, we tell them yeah. about it and so we program the children to be our evangelists, right? <laughs> so we get orders for jelly snakes and chocolates as a result. But, but very quickly, the adults realise they can get a coffee and there is a, there's definitely a hesitance to be the first people on the street to get the circus, you know? So it is a circus. Like yeah. this thing... Yeah, everyone comes out to I'm see the first delivery. When, at night time, it's got all these bright, you know, aviation lights and it looks really amazing. Yeah. But the whole street is out and they're all filming and, you know, you might be in your pajamas or something. So, uh, so no, there is hesitancy to do that. But once the dam breaks, it is a flood. Everyone, once they see that, you know, it's not crazy to do this, they straight away do it. And then normal state, which is where we are in our first town, normal state is the number one thing that people order by drone is coffee. That is the killer app for drone delivery. But that, that evolves too. So, you know, if I was to break it down, you know, coffee, pastries, breakfast, that kind of stuff is what keeps us busy for the first five or six hours of the operation. Mm -hmm. Convenience stores so are single basket goods. Mm -hmm. And we, we can fly 14,000 of the 19,000 and Tesco products. So there's a bit, lot of choice. You can get anything you want. Not at the same time. <laughs> not, not all of them, not yet. Um, we, we carry three kilos and 30,000. Feels 000. like my weekly Tesco shop. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we do aim to carry that single basket market, which is a gigantic market, the convenience store market. Yep. Um, and, you know, so people, yep. once, once they know that it's just normal to order drone delivery, they start to test you with things they genuinely need. And I remember when you came to see it, mm. It was an order for a head of broccoli yeah. and some nappy cream. Yeah. And that was one order, I think it was about 6 p.m. The head of broccoli cost 60 cents. Yeah. And we charged $5 for that delivery. That, that family needed a head of broccoli. They needed There was hell to pay moment. because Irish people, cream. for those that don't know, dinner is meat and three veg, yeah. always, right? Uh, potatoes being one of the veg, compulsory. Um, so, but it was, great, it was a great yeah, idea because, see. yeah, it's amazing. So the pharmacy is huge, so people get pharmacy late at night. Uh, everything. Yeah. I mean... And, that, and that's, I mean, that's, that's the beauty of it. But... But we're talking about two towns in Ireland right now where you're bringing food trucks onto the top of a supermarket. I mean, going from where you are today to 10 million flights a day, just talk us through, like, when will everybody here be seeing yep. drone delivery in their suburban towns and suburban communities? What's the path yep. to going from where MANA is today to, to, to really mass rolling out? And what does that look yep. like? So there's regulations that were written into law in, in the EU last March that become law 1st of January 2023. We want to be ready to scale across Europe on that day and we want to go as parallel, as fast as we can across all of suburban Europe as quickly as we can because the market is open for us from 23 onwards. It's for us to be ready to, to do that scaling. So the challenges we have to solve primarily are around manufacturing at scale mm -hmm. this device and getting, well, getting that device certified as well. So th th those are difficult, but I'm pretty confident we will be starting to scale in 23 onwards to, across Europe. Coming to a town near you in 2023. Indeed. Um, we're, we're coming close on time, but before we, we finish up, um, 
I mean, you're talking about rolling out now in 2023, but you're obviously going up against some big giants in the space. I mean, Google are kind of well known for operating yeah. Google Wing, which I, I, and I think they've they also have an got operation an here. Operation yeah. here in, in Helsinki. We know Amazon have, have had a drone program in the past. I mean, you're going up against some giants in this space. Like, yep. why can Mana win? Um, yeah, so like, I mean, Amazon were the first company really to say drone delivery could happen. So all credit to Amazon. Uh, they've since not done a whole lot. Uh, whereas Wing, Wing are my favourite drone delivery company outside of Mana. Uh, they've an awesome product. It's it's available right here in Helsinki. It's a great product, and they we have the same dream we have. But do do I fear Wing? No. Like I'm I'm happy to share a trillion plus dollar industry with Alphabet uh, if that's what what it takes. But you know, in the end, I'm a I'm a founder. I've always I've always thrived. Th you know, I, I've always had success as of my teams in beating the big guy. You know, or surviving the big guy because small teams and entrepreneurial teams. We wake up in the morning saying we want we have a mission to change the world, to make the world a better place, greener, to empower communities, to create jobs, to just make life better for everybody and build a gigantic business that has our signature on it. Our name is written on the circuit board that goes onto that aircraft and we're very proud of it. People who work for big companies, with no disrespect for them at all, you know, wake up to learn, to build a career. We have no interest in building in a career. We have a mission and we are absolutely rabid about making sure that we deliver deliver on that. So passion is the, ch is the difference, I think, the level of passion. And, and, and worst case, look, you know, uh, if you think about it, there's just the UK market alone, there's 850 million deliveries a year in the UK alone. Mm -hmm. There's a big, big prize and you can multiply that by a thousand for the rest of the world. It is such a gigantic space. Being able to fix last mile is so big that I'd be and very happy. And grow its reach, right? Oh yeah, because I mean, of, of course, like there's new, there's new categories reach. that never existed before. Like yeah. even burgers and fries is not really a good product to deliver, but if you can deliver it in two minutes, 45 seconds, which is our flight time in our new town, burgers and fries and coffees and nappy cream become viable things to deliver. And our cost base, we never even mentioned this, our cost base is a fraction of what it costs to get a human in a car to deliver a product. And I mean, on that note, we won't sort of dive into the cost base, but I've, I've seen it and it's, it's incredibly exciting. Um, we're privileged to, to be able to back you guys to do this. And, and uh, all I can say is keep your eyes peeled. Drone delivery, uh, MANA drone delivery coming to you guys by, by 2023. And thank you very much, Bobby, for taking thank the time you. to pleasure. talk today. Thank you. Good stuff.